Hey folks, it's Pat here. Welcome back. I've uh, got a chapter 9 question that I want to cover here, and that's the T distribution. So this problem, when you get it, it's, um, it basically skips a couple steps that you were uh, doing back in uh, chapter 7, where you were learning to use the, the Alex calculator here to do Z table lookups. This one's exactly the same. You're just doing T table lookups, okay? And the, the T distribution, the student's T distribution, is very similar to the Z distribution. It just involves a new concept here, which is known as degrees of freedom, okay? And your degrees of freedom, and you'll learn this a little bit later, is always whatever your sample size is, minus one, okay? Uh, well, in some cases, it's had minus two. But don't worry about that right now, okay? Just understand that um, basically what this does is it gives you a little bit of wiggle room. <laughs> All right, that's a very short version of that. All right, so, but for the purposes of this problem, all you're doing is table lookups, okay, and using the calculator in order to do that, okay? And so the first one, this first problem here, or first question here, you'll always be using this guy, so which is probability t of less than what, okay? And for the second one, this is one where you're looking cutoff values, and so you're always going to use this guy right here, all right? And so the same rules apply as the ones in before, um, back with uh, Z. Just understand that this time it's backwards, okay? So it's looking things up in a different direction. That might take you a little bit of getting used to, but just pay attention to what f direction the sign is facing here. So like for this one right here, T is greater than or equal to 1.30. So this one, it faces the same direction, so we can just punch this one in directly. Okay, and with DF, degrees of freedom will always give that to you in the answer or in the, in the question up here. So 10 degrees of freedom gives us a T score or a T value of 0 0.11, uh, three decimal places, 111. Okay, and so just, yeah, pay attention to that and don't copy and paste it in there. So I was doing that and now it won't let you do it. So don't do that. <laughs> okay, so just be really careful. All right, so anyway. Um, and then for this next one, consider a distribution with 11 degrees of freedom. Find the value of C. C is the same as it was with Z. It's a cutoff value, okay, where our negative C and our positive C, um, those two values taken in tandem, um, 95% or dot .95 of the um, observations would actually fall between those two, okay? And so just like we did before, this one's pretty straightforward. You're just going to take that, subtract dot .95, okay? So you're going to use the complement rule here. Split that in half. Okay, so dot zero two five. All right, now you can punch that in the T like that, and be sure to check your degrees of freedom because sometimes these change just like this between two problems. Sometimes they're the same. You never know. All right, and so there's our answer right there. So this would actually be positive two dot two zero and negative two dot two zero. So that would be positive and negative C. So two dot two zero, and the T distribution is very similar to the C distribution or the Z distribution. So you know if you understand Z scores, T T T values aren't that much different. All right, so give that one a check, and there we go. All right, oh okay, you don't need to put zeros at the end of the number. Thanks for reminding me, Alex. <laughs> I thought I missed that one there real quick. All right, let's try one more here. All right, see what else we get. Okay. So like this one. Um, oh, actually, this one is a little bit different. So this is um, P with um, two. What's the probability of finding? Or what's the probability of T given these two values on either end? One dot three two. So this one, um, you're just going to do it kind of like we did back in Z, but you're going to actually punch these in in backwards order like this and now subtract all right them from each other that'll give you the difference between the two and you can punch in two of these at the same time negative one dot three two with 21 degrees of freedom and it's really easy to tell if you got it backwards which you might have done here because it'll give you the undefined <laughs> right, so i did it backwards all right so it's one dot three two oh no sorry um p because you can't have a negative probability all right so um, negative 1.32 and so if you get that undefined you just did it backwards all right no big deal so and let's go ahead and subtract that there we go uh, 1.32 with 21 degrees of freedom there we go there's our answer so that's the probability so 80 percent of the probability falls between these two things that should make um, a bit of sense for you so 0 0.0 0 0.8 Zero, zero, right? Eight, zero. Well, let's see if it yells at me about that again. All right, so probability of T being less than um, the well, cutoff value is 0 0.01. So this one, of course, we're just going to use this table lookup right here. And this one, I believe, is the one where you have to use. So 
the complement rule, but let's just punch it in there. So we can do a little bit of diagnostics as we go through it. So dot L1 with 18 degrees of freedom. Okay, so 2.25. So um, this is wrong, all right? And so you should be able to tell that this one is wrong because this is a very high T value right here. And so probably, because think about it along the T distribution, okay? So 2.25 standard deviation is gonna be way, well, it's not standard deviation, but the T score of 2.25 is gonna be way out here on the tail, okay? And so the probability of finding T values that are less than that cutoff value would be the opposite of this, okay? So what we did in this case is we're gonna actually have to take this value right here, subtract it from one, okay? Oops. And look it up from dot nine nine, okay? Because we know that finding a T value that's less than this one is gonna be extremely rare. So with 18 degrees of freedom. There we go. So yes, finding something lower than that would be extremely rare or less than 0.01%. So 2.55, there we go. Three decimal places, 2.552. <laughs> well, let's see if they yell at me about this one. Let's find out. There we go, check. Yeah, they're gonna yell at me about that. <laughs> you don't need zeros at the end of the number. <laughs> okay, all right, well, t-distribution, there you go. I hope this helped. There's a couple different combinations of those, but they're all based upon the, the principles that we just covered there real quick. So I uh, hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.